Well, we couldn't help ourselves. We were enjoying the different flavors we're getting out of the glassware so much. We've even just kind of gone silly. It's we, back. Yeah, so we're using the same, using that same glass again that we have been enjoying quite a bit. Right. And uh, Keith had the suggestion last time. He said, hey, how about a wine glass? <laughs> <laughs> because well, I mean, we'll show you why after the intro. Yeah, actually, yeah, that's true. We, we'll get into that in a minute. And uh, we've got now we've stepped it up a notch. Got an Imperial IPA. Okay. Hitting New Belgium Brewing again. This All is their right. new one, part of their Explorer series. And uh, full disclosure. You've had one? I've had one. Okay. Andrew's had one. Wow. Had one. Okay. We've got all that for this Give It a Shot. I'm Andrew. And I'm Keith. And we are about beverages.com. And, and the beverage we are about today is the Rampant Imperial IPA from New Belgium. I saw this at Total Wine as well. I oh, almost did you? bought it. Yeah, I, I, I wasn't sure. I know sometimes New Belgium. We're I know. I'm sure. But, but we've, been, they, we've been back on their good side lately. Yes. Or they've been back they've on been our, our good, good side. side. Yeah. That's what I should say. There's goodness going on. But, <laughs> there uh, is. So this is uh, a new one from them. It's part of their Explorer series. Correct. Um, it checks in at, uh, well, we'd expect this from an Imperial IPA, 8.5% uh, alcohol. Wasn't this around, was it 8 Ish, I forgot what it was for the yeah, six pack. Yeah, right around eight bucks. Okay. Yeah, so not, so not too bad. Um, yeah, actually at eight and a half percent, I think a little on the lighter side for an imperial for IPA. An imperial, so I, yeah. that's almost like an ancestral imperial IPA. <laughs> that's what I'm talking. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about here. That's what drew you to it. <laughs> that's what drew me to it. So as we mentioned before, glass wise, yeah. Or, or did we? Did no, no, no. That's it. Let's is there more detail there? No, no, no. Go ahead and get into it. Let's go. We, when we were talking about the 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 globe or the bowl shaped part of this, we were remarking that it's you know very similar actually to the globe and bowl shaped part of this. Um, the one thing it doesn't have obviously is it's got this these cool little uh, ridges. It does. Or, uh, <laughs> it's it's is it rib for your pleasure? <laughs> is it? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know if it I is. Just say it's, that or not. It's ribbed for our tasting for a, pleasure. For our tasting pleasure. Ooh, for our drinking pleasure. For our tasting pleasure. Yeah. Wow. So, yes. which we did notice in the last podcast, when you tip it and bring it back, it naturally does really aerate things. It gives things a, a good head again, and uh, and and really sends some good aromatics toward the toward the top of the glass. So that is the one thing that this is lacking. So, but we thought, other than that. Very similar, in yeah, very shape. much. So we're gonna almost we're the gonna exact. I mean, that is almost the exact same. So well, because we were kind of remarked on initially. I said, well, let's try it compared to a tulip glass, and then yeah. when you mentioned that, I was like, you know what? I have a glass that looks exactly like that, mm-hmm. and then I, th- I believe this is specifically a Chardonnay glass. I think that's what that one Chard is. Chard, or you know, I, I I think you could drink like a, a Pinot or something. I think Pinot, some some reds, maybe a little bit wider for some reds, but yeah, that yeah, would that, be a, that would be a. Better. I've got that sweet Pinot Noir glass. It's got it's almost like kind of big on the bottom, and then. Those up. little, f- yeah, oh, little right. flare ones that's right. you that are like that. So. The, those German Pinot Noir glasses or whatever, because the Germans go a little bigger, I guess. I'm not sure. Oh, okay. I, I have no idea. Yeah. But and, and you said that was actually why they made the glass this way, yeah. too, wasn't it? They he mentioned that specifically in the video. Sam from Dogfish Head specifically saw that. And there's, a, there's a video out there. There's a video. The we'll process. put a link to it. Let's do that. Beverages.com. Right. We'll do that. And you don't we, just have he to. He does it. Yeah. And we don't have to get it from. You don't have to get these glasses specifically from Dogfish Head, as we said a week back. Sierra Nevada. Sierra Nevada. Also and carries the, these. And eventually, probably right through the uh, website, the glassmaker is uh, Spiegelau. Yeah. S-P-I-E-G-L-A-U. L-A-U. Something yeah. like that. So, but easy to find uh, this information on the interwebs or right here at aboutbeverages.com. So. And as I said, I have had this. Andrew's had it, so but not out of this glass. No, I have not. So you want me to give you all my tasting notes? For no, <laughs> <laughs> why wow, you just broke out and everything? This one not as much of the uh, color distortion. That we'd remarked on with some of the other ones, where it got like oh, yeah. it was super golden at the bottom, and then got more toward the yeah. kind of orangey, coppery color. This one a lot less than that. Yeah, a lot of carbonation going on though. I as well, mostly toward the center again. Yeah, mine's yeah, all right. but we'd noted that comes from the etching. We think. Yeah, the there's an etching kind of on the inside of the glass that kind of holds that carbonation toward the center as but opposed to going out. Yeah, orangey, gold, yellow, and pretty clear. With the yeah, very. With I think yeah, very clear. So. Yeah, ev- ev- all the had two of these. Okay, well that's a good sign. Well, I I don't throw Could things be. away. Okay, well. <laughs> <laughs> I've had two it, of these. I've used two of these for cleaning my floors. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I used it as a paint thinner. <laughs> it's 
relatively mild aroma wise actually to me um there's not a that uh, there's not a lot going on in there they're similar though i would say i think so wise i mean this is a little bit bigger so yeah that probably focuses a l- the slightest bit more but you get the same very, general i think i think these are very similar yeah i i think there's some great s- and not just necessarily the generic savory that we always kind of throw out i think there's some really good specific to like there's some sage in there there's some a uh, little bit of you know a little bit of pine a little i think i think there's some really nice blend of those kind of aromatics in there yeah it's definitely and not the citrus it's almost uh, a little brothy in nature like chicken soup there is like, like because a there's salty it's exactly uh, right a right thing at the back of at yes. the end of that yes it's almost like that you're getting some salty savoriness yeah. in there too yeah yeah but it's but uh, but once again it's there but it's not like it's like wow yeah, it no, it's, jump out at no you. it's there. It's not knocking me but over. But it's pleasant. Okay. Tall, dark, and unrepugnant. <laughs> that's, what, that's what women call me. That is the mildest Imperial IPA I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like that, though, in a way. I, I know, I did too. I actually I actually really like this beer. Um, like Because it, it is a little on the milder side. And like I said, I joked earlier about it being sessionable. But it's kind of a sessionable Imperial IPA. Oh, from a con- consumption standpoint. Right. Yeah. Ooh, I'm getting a little bit of that kickback of some of those yeah. herbs right now. Right. But it's not a heavy... I mean, there's no. some good bitterness there. Good, you know, yeah. good sours. The, I think the savor... I think all those flavors I talked about and the aroma really come through in the taste. But it's still nice and smooth. It's clean Almost to me. Basil. A little dry there's at the front. Nice. There is a little bit, yeah. A lot of those kind of good herbs are in there. A lot of good herbage, huh? Um, I I really liked it. It it has different. I mean, like I said, I've had two. It's these glasses. It's amazing. Like I said, it's really. (laughs) It feels like we're an infomercial for these things. I know it's different. Like it is. You know, it could be good or bad depending on if you'd like your flavors a little more muted. (laughs) You know, but because this tastes definitely different than the other two I'd had. Well, kind of like when we were talking earlier about this, it reminded me of. At our buckle, when we would cold pre- cold brew coffee, yeah, good. and how yeah, good comparison it, it it that just sort of leveled everything out. Those, yeah, those flavors. I mean, it, it wasn't bad, but it just wasn't like you flattened everything. You, you flattened everything out. You've it, taken all the nuance. Right. You've taken all the wonderful things that I love about coffee that you love about coffee, right. and you've taken them out and yeah. ruined them. Yeah. And usually with a cold press, it's because you're doing it because you're. Oh, I'm trying to get rid of the acid or the extra this and that. Right. It's like if you just bought a better coffee to start with, <laughs> or someone that didn't do it with either water process or, or someone, someone yeah. you know, like I said, using quench in their cycle. That that I mean, that's what is creating a lot of those for me. Like I said, because I have to taste a lot of those things. Yep. That's usually what does it to me is those kind of cheaper coffees. So you're trying to fix something that could have been better to start with. Right. Right. So now what you what you have here then is you have a glass that takes. A, a well-crafted beer and represents it. Yeah, you hope in the way that the brewer was intending it to be represented. Yeah, and that's uh, once again. I mean, uh, the glass makes a difference for for all of it, the, and there's a there's a reason behind it. I know to say, probably not to a lot of our listeners and people watching this podcast. You, you you guys probably get that, but there are a lot of people out there who who do not. So, but once again, help us spread the word that, uh, like I said, if you want things that are more you know flat or homogenized and and not as with the highs and or the high right. points then yeah you are going to want to go more for a, a traditional pint glass or something like that but if if you have an ipa that you really want to enhance what's there that's going to do it but this did a pretty good job actually i and, i and think I, so they they were actually fairly similar like i said i think that's why like i said i it was just i wasn't even thinking about it that time i was like eh, i don't want to I thought yeah, it'll it'll be good. It'll it'll constant and it and it did a good job for. It. In fact, actually, I think the next time I went to have a beer, I think I actually did grab my wine glass. <laughs> so you know, little did I know, I was sort of on the same process as the uh, as the professionals at uh, at Dogfish Head and, and Sierra Nevada. So, but they added the the fun base there. <laughs> they did. Yeah, I I yeah, I really like this. I was really happy with this. Really glad for this purchase. This is definitely one like I said it's a year-round thing, so it's not like you have to rush okay. out to get uh more of it. It's part of that Explorer ser- Explorer series, I should say. I keep wanting to put an extra ER on there, but it's not Explorer series. Oh, Explorer, not Explorer. Yeah, Explorer series. Oh, Explorer. Um and so it's definitely one I I will I will purchase this one again. Like I said I I really liked it, really happy with what they did with it. Um 
Now this you just because it, it was balanced as introduction to Imperial IPA, I think almost. I, I think so because it is milder. Now, you, granted, it has that not everybody maybe that savory isn't everybody's style. That's kind of that's kind of that dividing line. Like you know, do you, do you want your beer to be more citrusy, more savory? Yeah, you know, like because this one is definitely not balanced in that way. I don't think. I mean, there's a little no. gra- there's a little grapefruity in there. I think which is kind of melded into the bitterness at the back as part of those savory notes but it's more about like you said the basil we talked about sage you know thyme like those kind of nice yeah. savory and i but i very i love i really like this beer quite a lot yeah quite, um, very i'm quite happy. surprised i i honestly i was thinking that this was going to be one of those that you hadn't liked but when you <laughs> said you'd already had two i was like well that's probably a pretty good sign unless the first one was so bad you're like really could it have been that bad i gotta have another <laughs> one but uh no that's no, that, I, I like that as well. That's it's it's not your typical imperial yeah. IPA. Yeah, exactly. And, and I and so I like I, I and not that I dislike imperial IPAs, but I like this for its atypicality. Well, what it kind of oh wow, I don't know I don't even know if that's a word, but it is now. We'll <laughs> we'll, we'll buy a domain for that one just to make sure no one else gets it. Atypicality. Oh, wow. Well, this has been uh, some great times with some great glasses here for the last uh, week and a half. And uh, where you can find the tasting notes and uh, reviews for this uh, particular beverage, this rampant IPA from New Belgium, is, of course, at aboutbeverages.com. And uh, while you're there, uh, check out all the links that we're going to have to all these other things. I'll put a link to these glasses if people are interested in getting those. Um, I will have links, obviously, to the breweries. And uh, definitely look at the last couple podcasts we did. We had some other good things where we were talking about uh, what was it we were discussing. We had uh, some extra links that we were going to put in there for it. Now they've all they've all gone off the top of my head. There was a, a beer oh, or something we were talking about that you said uh, it was a how to get people from Bud up through. Oh yeah, you know, I'm going to try to find that. Gradually Ho- work their way. I so found ho- it. Hopefully we found it. Yeah, hopefully it, it's it'll there. Stay down here at the bottom yeah. if you actually did or not. <laughs> Keith was successful or unsuccessful. Yeah. Keith was unsuccessful. Click. Yeah. Click yes or no. Check whether you think I was. <laughs> Click sad face emoticon. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, definitely uh, follow us on Twitter, Facebook. All these things are great. Uh, head to the website. Leave comments. We appreciate all the comments we've been getting on YouTube as well. We know we've Let got a new viewer in Las Vegas. We appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's thanks, very uh, nice too. We Mr. Might, Dave Lavarni. Might be getting that. some new theme oh, maybe music. Maybe we should say his last name. Maybe we get some new theme music. Oh, yeah. What we hope. I'm going to be texting you. Hopefully you'll have received those texts already. Now we've called you Maybe. out on the internet. Yeah. You know what happens then. They're Las trouble. Vegas Dave. That's right. Las Vegas Dave. Uh, do you have to take out his last name from before I said that? <laughs> I don't have to if you don't want to. Oh, I don't know. Maybe you should. I don't know. It's don't up know. to you. Yeah, maybe we should. People don't want to track him down. Yeah, track him down. So, uh, so Dave, yeah, we're going to be lo- looking for some, since you are a professional and talented musician, we're going to be looking for some uh, theme music from you. You're on the hot seat now. He is on the hot seat. We've called him out that hopefully we'll finally start getting some new music. But whether we like it or not, you should give it a shot. <laughs>